Good morning. Good morning. Happy Easter. Easter. It is good to have you here. Will you join me in our call to worship? Will you stand as you are able? Well, living God, this morning begins in darkness. The day dawns in quiet. Bring forth the sun from its slumber and Jesus from the tomb. Our Savior, you greet us on this morning of mystery and hope. Amen. Amen. Hear now the story of the risen Christ from the Gospel of St. Luke in the 24th chapter. But on the first day of the week at early dawn, they came to the tomb, taking the spices that they had prepared, and they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they went in, they did not find the body. While they were perplexed about this, suddenly two men in dazzling clothes stood beside them, and the women were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee that the Son of Man must be handed over to sinners and be crucified and on the third day rise again. And then they remembered his words, and returning from the tomb, they told all this to the eleven and to all the rest. Now it was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary, the mother of James, and the other women with them who told this to the apostles. But these words seemed to them an idle tale, and they did not believe them. But Peter got up and ran to the tomb, and stooping and looking in, he saw the linen cloths by themselves, and then he went home amazed at what had happened. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Amen. Will you join me in our litany of praise? The stone has been rolled away. The body is gone. Can the words of the angels be true? <laughs> Let us proclaim with Mary. We have seen the risen Lord. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Christ, Christ is risen, risen indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. We will now light the Paschal candle. Hear now the words of God. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word was life, and the life was the light of all humanity. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness had not overcome it. Christ is our light. Let us pray. Eternal God, giver of light and life, bless this new flame that by its radiance and warmth we may respond to your love and grace and be set free from all that separates us from you and from each other. Through Jesus Christ, the Son of Righteousness, amen. With this past Paschal candle that is now lit, May the light of Christ, rising in glory, illumine our hearts and our minds. Christ is our light. <coughs> Amen. So, who knows where it says in the Bible, we walk by faith and not by sight? Give you a hint, 2 Corinthians. Give you another hint, chapter 5. First person to tell me after the service can get a free Easter egg from the candy table. Okay? Joanne has to say yes at that moment, right? So, uh, we walk by faith and not by sight. It's in 2 Corinthians chapter 5. My friends, because of resurrection, because of what Jesus Christ has done for us, we are no longer defined by our sins or by our iniquities, our sorrows or our transgressions, for we are all drawn in and redefined by Christ's death, 
So when you look in the mirror, when you look at a family member, when you look at a friend, when you look at a stranger or opponent or an enemy or somebody on the street, when you look at them, their sin does not define them. Your sin does not define you. Because God's mercy revealed in Christ's crucifixion and resurrection now defines us all. We have been forgiven. We have been redeemed. We have received eternal life. But today is the day where we proclaim the resurrection. We hear again. We don't try to overinterpret it, overexplain it. We let that story be. And so let's turn to the Gospel of John, chapter 20, and hear John's version of the resurrection story. Chapter 20, verse 1, early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. And so she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciples set out and went toward the tomb. And the two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reach the tomb first. You see, when you write your own gospel, you get to say who wins the race. Just something to think about if you're ever... So then, he bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. And then Simon Peter came, and following him, he went into the tomb. And he also saw the linen wrappings lying there, and the cloth that had been laid on Jesus' head, but it was not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in, and he saw, and he believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. And then the disciples returned to their homes. So notice in those first 10 verses, there, there's no angels, there's no one there to explain the resurrection, to, to tell you what happened or how it happened. No one knows it is the resurrection is, as we say, we live by faith. Verse 11, but Mary stood weeping outside the tomb, and as she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white, sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. And they said to her, woman, why are you weeping? And she said to them, they have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. And when she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know it was Jesus. And Jesus said to her, woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? And supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, sir, if you have carried him away, Tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. And Jesus said to her, Mary, Mary. And she turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabuni, which means teacher. And Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have yet to ascend to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am sending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples that I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. He had said these things to her, and we hear him again. And my hope is that we are hearing these things as if for the very first time. For the very first time, realizing and understanding that we are being sent upon hearing this news of resurrection, that Jesus is calling us from out of this tomb where death, and vic- death had seemed to have this victory, but instead the resurrection. God comes in and says, no, wait, there is more to this story. And that in this calling, in the scene, and this understanding that Mary was there, and, and she looks in, and it, it all seems so esoteric, so theoretical, so hard to believe, but the resurrection became this concrete reality when Jesus said to her, Mary. And then it was true. Then she began to understand. Then she began to believe. And that resurrection then soon, the power, the understanding, the glory, the praise happened because it is on this day that we (coughs) proclaim it, that we live into it, because it's not only on a Resurrection Sunday that we celebrate, but this Sunday turns into Monday. 
The Sunday turns into a Monday, which it turns into a Tuesday. Every day of our life, we hear the story and we live into it because the same power that raised Christ from the dead on that very day is alive and well inside of you each and every day of the week. And so we have to proclaim who this Jesus risen Christ is as our Savior, as our Lord. And so what's interesting is this past week, if we look at, at what's happened, right, because many of you, if you had gone to church here or somewhere else, you may have been there where it was Palm Sunday, right, the triumphal entry of Jesus into Jerusalem. And everybody was singing, Hosanna, Lord, save us. And last Sunday was a, was a happy time and glorious time. And now here we are, right, it's, it's Easter Sunday and we proclaim Christ risen. But what happened in between? What happened in between was the commandment of who, of what Jesus was trying to help us understand the whole time through his life and ministry was that this is the greatest commandment, that you love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, and that you love your neighbor as yourself. This is what I'm commanding to you, what you understand, that what you would do. And he also did this other thing where he washed the feet of the disciples, right? He washed the feet of the disciples. He washed. What does that mean? You see, back in those days, on those dusty roads where everybody's walking, to come and recline around the table, to be there means that you, your feet would have been dirty, and so the servants, the lowest of the low, would have washed the feet. You would have had to have been there so that everyone would have been included around the table. Everyone would have been included just as we include them around this communion table, the Lord's table. And Jesus was there washing the feet. Now, who else was in that room? Do you remember? Who else was in there besides the disciples? Mary. Mary. Who else? What are some disciples that have kind of a really important part of this whole crucifixion story? Judas. Who else? Peter. You see, in that very room, in that very room where was, was Peter who would eventually deny Jesus, and yet Jesus was there to wipe his feet, to clean his feet. Judas was there who would betray him, and yet Jesus washed his feet. And see, so I start to think of this story that here in this whole resurrection story, to understand what's really happening is because on that night that Jesus was, in, was, was being betrayed and when he was in the Garden of Gethsemane and the Roman authorities came to arrest him, they came up to him and Jesus took control. And Jesus says, whom are you looking for? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. And Jesus answered, I am he. I am he. You see, he was there, and the ones who were betraying him were there that night. And in that room, he was washing their, their, their feet. And we have to understand this, and I need to understand that the same Jesus who said, I am he so willingly that went along with the authorities that were eventually going to crucify him was the same Jesus that could take on the world, the hate, the sin, the evil, all that was going to be done to him. Because on that Thursday night here, when we were in that service of foot washing, when we were here and that was happening, I started to thinking about, could I wash the feet of those who I have been upset with? Could I wash the feet of those that have hurt me in my life? Now, I don't know, maybe, maybe you forgive and get along and stuff with people a lot easier, but think about maybe somebody in your life who's upset you, that's hurt you. Would you be able to wash their feet to have this greatest ass, um, action of hospitality? Would you be able to do that? I don't know. But there's this Jesus that can say, I am, I was there, I am he, when they came to arrest him. Because in the Gospel of John, we have the great I am statements, right? I am the gate, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life, I am the resurrection and the life, I am the vine, I am the bread of life. This one who is all things that harken back to us, this I am of who Jesus Christ is. Because how can you put into words what God has done through Jesus Christ in this resurrection? Because you see, we need to understand this because it is in this moment 
That when we go through and we live our life and we proclaim who Jesus Christ is our Lord, it all sounds good when we're in here having a good time and praising God and worshiping and singing the songs, but then we go out into life and life hits us, and then what happens? The weight of our sin and our mistakes starts to weigh upon us, and then we start to think, well, maybe I'm not good enough. I'm not deserving enough. Maybe this grace and mercy that happened from the cross isn't really for me. And what Jesus Christ is saying is, yes, it is for you, because everybody that was there that night I was crucified is is just as bad as you are, but also no better than you. And everybody was there when I realized that, that Jesus Christ could there and say to everyone and say to me, forgive them for they know not what they do, that I realized that each and every day is a day that the Lord has made and I can wake up as a bit for the very first time into this resurrection power because I know that I'm created in the image of God. I'm called as a child of God, and I'm being sent because Jesus says that I want you to go out and do this for others because he says in John chapter 13, you call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet, for I have set you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. And very truly, I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. And very truly, I tell you, whoever receives one whom I send receives me, and whoever receives me receives him who sent me. Because you see, Jesus Christ is always saying, I and the Father are one. If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. And so we have this calling, this this, this, this movement to be sent into the world and proclaim this resurrection message. And so we start, we start, might start thinking to ourselves, well, what does it mean? How can I go out there and proclaim this resurrection message? Well, first thing we have to do is, one, just relax, because Christ rose, right? And the power of the Holy Spirit is going to be in you as you are out there. And Paul says to us in Ephesians 5:14. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible, for everything that becomes visible is light. Therefore, it says, sleeper, awake, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. Be careful, then, how you live, not as unwise people, but as wise. Sleeper, awake, and rise from the dead, for Christ will shine on you. And so we go out, and one of the things we have to look at is, what does it mean to be humble according to Christ, because Christ humbled himself into the point of death, death even on the cross. And so when we go out, we think about how can I proclaim this resurrection message to other people? Because it might be a little uncomfortable sometimes, and you know, how do we start saying that? We don't want to think people thinking we're some sort of Jesus freak or something like that, right? That can, that can happen out there, but as you, in terms of what you do, and we have to realize sometimes it's kind of what's going on for us. Now, all of us in here, right, want to be a good Christian, a good follower of Christ. Does everybody in here want to be a good Christian? Amen, follower of Christ, right? So to do that, we're gonna to have to go out there and at least witness, proclaim, and do who Jesus Christ is as Lord and Savior in our life. And if we can't say that, yes, Jesus is my Lord and Savior, if we can't witness to that effect, it's going to hold you back. And when you look at what's holding you back because of that, it's going to have to do with your pride, your uncertainty, your questioning. And so you can just start being the beautiful you that God has cre created and just share that with the world. And just say, yeah, you know, today's a great day. I'm so glad God loves me. And people are going to start realizing, hey, this person's got something. There's something going on in their life. And you're like, yeah, I've got a resurrected Lord and Savior. I've got a Jesus Christ who loves me day in and day out, and he gives me mercy and grace. So my prayer today is that this resurrection story that as you've heard it again, and some of you have heard it many, many years, but that you hear it again for the very first time, and like Mary who heard Jesus call her name, she realized the truth and the power in that is that today you will hear the Savior call your name. So take some time at some point through this day, and maybe you've already had this experience, to just be in prayer and to just be thankful. And listen for your Savior saying your name, calling to you, 
And let that be an affirmation, knowing that God hears you so that when you're wondering, when you're praying, and when you're calling out, Jesus, are you there? I am. Jesus, are you here? I am. Those moments in your life when you need Jesus to be there, you will know that the one who said I am throughout his whole life in ministry, the one who said I am he at the point of leading up to crucifixion is going to be the one who comes to you and says I am. Amen.